Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Solid Garage. So today we're going to go over the process of changing a water pump on a Jeep Wrangler 4 liter. We're going to use my uh, Wrangler right here as an example. Then we're going to go in and take a look at my Project 92 YJ and we're going to take that water pump off. Now there's a few things you can check if you think you might have a bad water pump. There's the obvious sign of it's leaking all over the place. They actually design it with a little weep hole in the bottom of it. We're going to look at that. But also there's a way to test that make sure it's pumping correctly. So let's take a quick look at it. Helping you guys out, saving money by doing repairs yourself. The first thing on the water pump that we're gonna check, obviously we're gonna look around the water pump itself for any signs of any leaks. We're gonna get a flashlight, crawl underneath there, and look, try to look up towards where the weep hole is at the, at the bottom of the water pump and see if there's any fluid coming out there. The next thing we're gonna check is this top radiator hose. We're gonna start the engine up and we're gonna be real careful not to uh, get our fingers caught in the fan or the belt or anything. With the engine running, we're gonna squeeze this top hose right here, and after the engine's up to operating temperature, when you squeeze this hose, you should feel a force of water push against your hand when you release it. You should feel a rush of water. And that tells you that, yeah, so the pump itself is working and circulating water. But like I said, the engine has to be up to operating temperature because your thermostat has to open up before fluid will start running through there. So you have to have the Jeep warmed up to be able to do that test. But this will be a lot easier for me to show you on my Project 92 YJ. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to do so as I do a complete rebuild on this. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of good information on repairs on a Jeep Wrangler YJ. So subscribe to follow along with this project. Now if the water pump shaft bearings fail, you might hear a howling sound coming from the water pump. The other thing you want to check is that uh, that you can't rock this back and forth. That would be a sign of it failing as well. So once we've determined our water pump is bad, we're going to continue on with the replacement. First thing we're going to do is disconnect our battery. Then we're going to drain our cooling system. Yeah, sorry this lighting is kind of harsh. We'll go in and look at it on my project vehicle. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen up the uh, power steering pump here so we can get the drive belt off. Let's remove the air box. We can get this out of the way. So now we're going to loosen these bolts on the uh, power steering pump here. There's two bolts on the back side of it here. And then on the bottom down here, there's an adjustment bolt. And this one is to adjust the tension on your accessory belt here. Now that we've got the power steering pump loose, this one actually gave me quite a bit of trouble uh, because of this bolt that was broken down on the bottom. Um, ended up undoing some other bolts that I didn't need to. But yeah, it's just those three, this one on the bottom. Once you get that, those out, your power steering pump should be able to move back and forth like this. And then you can take your accessory belt off. And it's a really good idea to draw a diagram or if you have a manual that'll tell you how to put the belt back on, but you just want to make sure that you take note of how it's on here so you get it going on the same way. Next, we're gonna remove the fan off the pulley attached to the water pump here. My personal preference, I like to put things back in the exact same spot to keep everything balanced real nice. So I'm gonna actually take a little, uh, yeah, this is fingernail polish. I'm just gonna mark that so I can get it back on in the same exact spot. All right, let's take these four bolts off and get this fan off this pulley. And when you're loosening the last one, it helps if you uh, get a wrench down on the one on the bottom here, like that, and then kind of brace it against this other bolt then that gives you a little leverage to be able to get these guys off. You shouldn't be able to wiggle this thing around side to side at all. 
and it should spin real nice and free. And down underneath here, there is our weep hole that we're looking for any fluid coming out. And by this time you've taken off the hoses and everything. I still have one hose attached right here. I'm going to take that off. Make sure you have a drain pan, something to catch fluid underneath because you're going to lose a little bit of fluid here. Okay, now just four bolts to get this water pump off. And as you take these four bolts out of the water pump, you want to keep track of where they go because they're actually different lengths. So I went ahead and uh, labeled mine here so I can get them back in the exact same spot. Got our drip pan in place, and with that, water pump comes off. Now with these water pumps, it's kind of obvious, but I feel like I really need to mention, make sure you get the exact style you need for your engine. On these old four liters, this is actually a reverse flow and it's labeled with an R. There's a little R right there and that uh, just indicates that these uh, little fins are going the opposite direction than most others. So if you get the wrong one, it'll actually be pumping fluid the wrong direction. Your engine will overheat and you'll have all kinds of problems. So it's marked with a little R right there stating that it's a reverse flow. And then on the front of it, uh, some of them actually say reverse flow on the front of it. I don't see that on this one here. But anyways, make sure that when you get your new water pump, you're matching them up side by side, making sure they're exactly the same. We're gonna clean up all the old gasket off the surface here and get our new pump ready. I actually have a really good video on cleaning gasket surfaces. Uh, because this is a cast iron block, um, you don't have to be super careful. You don't want to gouge it. You want to be careful, but uh, it's okay to use a uh, metal putty knife as long as you're gentle and a uh, wire brush on it because it's not aluminum. Yes, there are some aluminum blocks. But uh, anyways, check out my other video on uh, cleaning a gasket surface. I'll put a link to it here and in the description of the video where you can follow that. So it might be a good idea if you would like to stuff a rag or something in here. Keep any little bristles from breaking off and flying in there. And make sure you get every little bit of RTV off of the block. And once you have the surface clean, all the RTV off of here, and get all the RTV and sealant off the bolts that go in there too, get those cleaned up. Once you have all that done, then you wanna take a little bit of lacquer thinner or acetone, and you wanna clean this surface up because you wanna get a really good seal with your RTV and new gasket here. So just a little bit of lacquer thinner or acetone, kinda of wipe the surface down here, get any residue off. All right, now we're gonna take our new water pump and we're gonna put a real thin bead of RTV around where the gasket's gonna go here. Then we're gonna put our new gasket on. Then we're gonna put a, another real thin bead of RTV around here. You don't want too much because you don't want it squishing out, interfering, interfering with the propeller here at all. So just real thin layers, RTV, gasket, RTV. Then our bolts, which are all labeled real nicely. This is number two. The long one goes down here. Number four, we're gonna put these two bolts in and that'll kind of help hold our gasket in place while we seat this on here real nice. Once you get your four bolts in place, just get them finger tight. Then you're gonna to torque them 
Let me check on the torque specification. And I'm going to torque these guys to 22 foot-pounds, but be sure to look up the torque specification for your specific, specific vehicle, because they do vary a little bit. And when you're torquing your new water pump in place, you actually want to uh, just get a finger tight, like I said, and then go a quarter of a turn when you're torquing it and alternate bolts in kind of a star pattern so it torques down nice and even and turning them just a quarter of a turn at a time. So once we've got our water pump back on, go ahead and throw the fan back on and your fan shroud. Put your power steering pump back in place. And then we're gonna uh, tighten the belt. So using that adjustment bolt on the side of the power steering pump here. And we're gonna use the belt deflection method. So what we're looking for, we're gonna take the long, long uh, length of the belt here. We're gonna put a ruler on it and we're gonna push down on it. And what we're looking for is about a half an inch of deflection meaning we can push the belt down about half an inch and that'll be tight enough. Now the worry is if your belt is too loose, it's gonna slip, you're gonna have squeaking. But on the other end, if your belt is too tight, it's really hard on the bearings and you can wear out your water pump, power steering pump, uh, pulleys, that kind of thing. But on these mid 90 Wrangler 4.0s, the only true way to properly set your belt tension is to get a belt tension gauge. But a lot of guys just use this uh, belt deflection method. And yeah, I did this on an engine that was out of my 92 Wrangler here, which made it a lot easier, but uh, it just makes it easier to film as well. This process is pretty much exactly the same if it, the engine's still in your vehicle. You don't have to take your engine out to do a water pump, but it just made it a lot easier for filming. Now to wrap it up, we're just gonna hook the battery cable back up, uh, filled up with coolant, hook all of our hoses back up, obviously and top it off with coolant. Start it up, warm it up, top it off again with coolant. You should be good to go, watch for leaks. If you haven't checked out my Patreon page, be sure to do that. A little more chatting, more pictures, some behind the scenes. And Brendan is one of my elite supporters, so I'd really like to say thank you, Brendan. I really appreciate it. Be sure to go check out his channel. He has a lot of great stuff over there. A lot of how-to videos, comparisons, reviews, stuff on the new Wranglers. Be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching and have a good day.